Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Yobi Thorian Alliance. What are we doing in today's video, Jacob? Since She-Hulk has finished, we are ranking all the MCU shows so far. So if you want to find out what our list are, starting from 8, working all the way up to the number one MCU show, stick around. Okay, so our criteria for today is they must be an MCU show and they have came out on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. So we're going to ignore the ones that came out on Netflix a little while ago, just specifically the new Disney+. Plus. Uh, lineup of MCU shows. Makes sense. Yeah. So that, and we've extended that to include all things that have been, you know, released that are at least a limited series and full length episodes. So that includes animation as well, excluding Groot because they're very short. <laughs> so they're not going to be included. So I'm going to kick us off. So at number eight, I've got Miss Marvel. I think the show was not tailored towards me, not very. I did find it very interesting. I didn't really enjoy her story arc. There just wasn't much to like about it. I appreciate it. I'm sure there's people out there that really loved it. But just for me, I didn't really look forward to it. And I didn't care too much about the characters whatsoever. What do you got number eight, Jake? I definitely agree with Luke. I'm the same with number eight, Miss Marvel. I think it had a really entertaining start and then it kind of went down. And then the ending was very lackluster and just didn't really amount to anything, just set setting up for uh, Captain Marvel 2, basically, and I just felt like it had potential. I thought it was going to be like a teen drama, her, you know, dating, and that's what, that's the feeling that I thought it was going to go for, but instead we had her, you know, going to different countries and, you know, liking free boys and it, it didn't really know what it wanted to be and it had potential and it just didn't stick with the landing and I just am quite disappointed. Yeah, I think it could have been quite good if they stuck with the teen drama, but instead mm. it kind of went off. But that's its own choice. Number seven, I've gone with Moon Knight, which is disappointing because I thought Moon Knight had a lot of potential. It obviously had a star power in its um, main actor, but I just found the show had lots of plot holes, didn't make a lot of sense, it was really trippy. I understand that's what they were going for, but I think it was so much so that I took nothing away from it, but more confusion and not in a good way. So that's my number seven. My number seven is She-Hulk. I just found the show. Give some credit, it was original and it tried something different, but I just didn't get any payoff with it and I still kind of didn't really understand the point of the show, but I am, if there is a season two, am open to see it develop and Jennifer Walters to develop her relationship with Daredevil and see it improve, but I just found it not as good as the other MCU show. Number six, I've got the animated show we spoke of, and that is What If. So What If was really, really cool. I loved the premise. I thought each episode was really, really good. But then they felt the need to kind of link it together and I think ruin it in the end. So it's disappointing because each episode was so awesome and then the last episode kind of, you know, undid its good work. So I would liked, would have liked to have seen it higher because of the how entertaining the most of the episodes were. But just because of the ending, I'm going to bring it down a little bit and... We do have another season, so um, I am looking forward to it, but hopefully it can make um, make up for what the last episode. My number six is Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I think this show had so much potential showing us the events of the blip and things in that nature, but unfortunately it didn't really see any of those sort of questions, and unfortunately the storyline was kind of... Not that interesting. It was supposed to be a storyline trying to stop a virus going on. And because of COVID, we didn't really get to see that. Instead, we got these flag smashes. I uh, still don't understand what they wanted to do. And uh, But I will say the banter between Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the best thing about the show. And Zemo as well. So those three... Uh, I think bumped this show up to be better than the other two. But like I said, the villain out of all the villains in the MCU, 
Falcon and the Winter Soldier has the worst because I don't understand their motive. In my opinion, if you don't understand the villain's motive, you, you can't empathise or like or... Yeah, agree with that. So, at number five, I've got Hawkeye. Hawkeye, I was excited for it, the fact that it was set at Christmas. I never really liked Hawkeye as a character. I don't dislike, I just didn't really understand what his power was or why he was so important, how he was even an Avenger. So I had low expectations for the show because of that. The trailer made it seem good. So because of that, it kind of met in the middle for me. It was, it exceeded my expectations, but also wasn't that amazing. But I liked the Christmas element. I liked the introductory of, you know, the new female Hawkeye handing over the, like the mantelpiece. I enjoyed the... Uh, it had some comedy in it. I thought it was cool with uh, kind of following this storyline of Ronan being a major part of the show and being, you know, Hawkeye's other alias. Uh, so it was cool to bring that into it. It was, as a limited series, I think it was good. You know, it was fine. You know, if it, was, if it had multiple seasons, I don't think it had the potential. But as a limited series introducing a future character that should be in MCU shows or movies, I'm quite happy with that. So number five, Hawkeye. I'm definitely in agreement with Luke. Mine number five is uh, Hawkeye as well. And I just think it did the um, main two characters a um, lot. Well, not as good as Falcon and the Winter. It's kind of equal. And I just think the show did a really good job of sending the... Passing on the mantle to Kate Bishop. She's a likeable female and seeing how we get to see her character development. And the storyline is okay, but I think the main charm to it is that it was set at Christmas. And my main nitpick is that uh, Kingpin is not really um, as good as Netflix, but I guess I kind of got to get it over that this is a new version of Kingpin. Netflix, That that's some vet. Uh, that didn't happen, and but overall, it was a kind of a good show for everyone. It brought in fans that want a light-hearted show and fans that want a serious show, and I think that's why it's um, better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So at number four, I've actually gone with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think I agree with Jacob said. I think the Flag Smashers <laughs> had potential, but we didn't get enough backstory on them and why they had so much hatred and why they wanted to do what they wanted to do, mm. but. I did like uh, the cinematics of the show. I think it had some good fight scenes. I, I quite like um, uh, Bucky and uh, the Falcon as two characters. So seeing them in a show together, them budding up. I think it had lots of really cool things. Zemo, uh, just lots of visually cool things. It was just that flag smashes again, not quite understanding their motive kind of put me off a bit. Probably could have did some reading and research on it, which I think we did, and it didn't quite line up with what the show did compared to the comic books. But, you know, if they got that right, this show could have been, you know, a number one show. So for that, I think four was a fair rating. Um, did have some star power to help it out. So number four, Falcon and the Soldier. My number four is Moon Knight. And I just think this show goes for that different factor character that people haven't heard of before. And... I guess you can say, did it succeed in a way? Yes, it did. In a way, no, it didn't. It's definitely in that ballpark. I was def. I think if you, it's kind of like the Joker's version of the. This show is the Joker's version. It tries to go for a different um, storyline. It's not involved with the MCU, so you can watch this show not having to watch the other shows. My main problem with Moon Knight is, is that I think they fail with the ending. Uh, the the story from episodes one to five were amazing. They kept us on the edge of our seats, and then the episode six, there was so much potential, and then they went with a CGI fight that just ruined it, and then added in the third personality that made it even more confusing, and then they basically did that so do we want a season two? And it's like, well, if you watch the ending cut scene, it's like, well, that storyline's resolved. So Moon Knight is, in a way, it's one of Marvel's best show, but in a way, it's kind of not. It depends how you look. 
So up to number three, and I've gone with She-Hulk. I, I really liked She-Hulk. I thought it was the right amount of episodes. I found each episode entertaining. I liked <laughs> the breaking of the fourth wall. I thought uh, the main character was quite witty. I enjoyed the, the cameos, but they didn't overpower the show. And I actually found the ending really, really clever. I think I... I think what they went for um, was really, really smart and it was designed to divide and those that didn't get it, didn't get it and those that got it really liked it. That's me, I didn't get that. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I think it was a, you know, a dice roll that, you know, it either paid off or it didn't, but they know that it's, this isn't a major show for them, so it doesn't actually have to be that successful. It was mm. just, you know, again, adding in a new character adding some more diversity to the range of characters, adding, you know, another female superhero. It's just, it was, it did what it needed to do for them. And if it ended up being a smash hit, great. And if it didn't, they still ticked a lot of the boxes they wanted to. So I'm quite happy with how She-Hulk was. So looking forward to the next. There you get Swan. Now I'm going into the top three for me and my number three is What If? And I think What If does an amazing uh, different sort of telling of storylines, was really enjoying the different storylines of each individual. And then unfortunately they had to connect everything. And I guess you could argue, well, they needed to. But in my personal opinion, the show was called What If? And to me that's, you know, telling different storylines like Star Wars Visions and... They didn't really do that, and then the last episode just bring brings it down, and in the previous video, it was actually last place, and the more I think about it, I just think this show is the most unique show out of all of them, but unfortunately, it didn't stick the landing, because I just don't buy how who the Watcher would have chose, but... If you think about the each individual episodes, they were amazing. We got to see Spider-Man in a zombie episode. We got to see T'Challa as Star Lord and different sort of episodes. And I hope season two doesn't have a storyline and just focuses on creating more unique storylines. And I hope they do that. Yeah, I think it's really good with the scenario-based things because mm. the essence, it's what if. It, like, if this small detail changed, how would that have affected it? And we mm. just accept it. That's not what happened, but let's imagine. So mm. it was very clever, but linking it together did it. But we, there's a whole video on that. You can watch that. So number two, I've gone with WandaVision. I, I really liked everything about WandaVision except for the villain. I just, I, I don't know if the villain was actually needed. We already mm. had Wanda who was, you know... Uh, a hero, uh, she's a villain turned hero, gone villain again, but not to destroy Earth or anything, but just for love. And I think that was enough. Adding in Agatha the Witch, I don't think actually was required whatsoever in this show. I think the show without that would have been a been better and a success. So it didn't need that. So if you take that out, the uniqueness of each episode and the style in which they filmed them was just genius. There's been no show like that. I saw the the trailer for the first episode and I thought this is so dumb what what are we going to get mm. and all these theories about what it was and then it was even better than that uh, in the end so we wipe out Agatha I would say this would be a number one show for me I actually liked it more than the number one show but having a major criticism like not liking the villain <laughs> it's hard to give it number one <laughs> because of that so I actually like it more but because of its criticism I'm gonna have to give it number two very much agree. I'm thinking the same with number two, One Division. I think this, this with its different, and it was the first Disney Plus show. I think it stuck with the landing. It does something different. It tells a really amazing storyline of loss and betrayal and someone using someone's emotion to try and get their loved one back. It does so many different uh unique comedy episodes that not a lot of other shows have actually done so it does originality is definitely what it does well and like what luke said they didn't need the villain one division and one division just should have been the the villain and she just should have should have fought against vision and that means we wouldn't have had that cgi fight at the end and this even though i prefer number one more um, not being biased, this show would be number one, and that that little nitpick keeps it down, and I definitely agree. Hmm. 
So that leaves one show left for me, and I've gone with Loki. So Loki, overall, there's not really too many criticisms for it. We've added the star power, we've added an ongoing storyline that really sets up the next phase of the MCU. Each episode was very interesting, or, you know, movie quality, movie, like quite good length as well. There's maybe one episode that was a bit dull and not as good as the other, but beyond that, each episode was very, very good. Uh, I was satisfied with the ending and I'm kind of left wanting more. I know what it leads into, but I don't know how we get there. But it was, um, you know, it's just, it's set up a really good mystery as to how the MCU is going to go moving forward. And I think the first episode was probably the best episode of any um, MCU show so far. The introductory of the um, uh, the TMV was really, really good. I just think that was a standout episode and really no criticisms for this show. And the, the villain, even if they are a villain, like it's still quite unsure or where it's going to go. I just liked what they've done. I definitely agree with you, um, Luke. My number one is the same. Loki, it tells a mystery story the best and we get to see Loki in a different light and him realising that he needs to team up and then him realising that he's actually passed away and so many different things to like about this show and I don't think Marvel would not be doing a season two if it didn't if it didn't deserve it and can't say more enough about it. It does the cinematography well, the storyline well, us guessing who the villain is and it's it leaves us wondering, is Owen Wilson gonna say wow when he finally gets that jet ski? Yeah, that's <laughs> what we're waiting for. And I think um Loki was Good enough to be a movie. I actually, yeah. think, I think it could have been a movie. I think they went with a show to push Disney Plus. Plus, we now get two seasons and you know six hours plus per season. Mm. So a movie we're only going to get two to three hours. So it actually, I'm glad it's a show because it deserves more time than what a movie could give it. Mm. But it is the quality of the movie and the plot itself is good enough that if you went and saw that as a movie, you go, well, that was a pretty good movie. It's just we would have been robbed of time where the show's given us more time. Well, comment down below what your list is with the MCU shows. And I guess we'll be doing this video again for next year's show. We've got Secret Invasion to look forward to. I think Secret Invasion has the possibility to maybe even take number one spot or number two. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell as always. Thank you all for watching. You are awesome and let the force be with you. Bye-bye.